In the, uh, in the book, I, I do talk about the fact that I've never been a coach who believes that, that golf is all in the mind. It, it, it clearly isn't. If you've got a, a dreadful golf swing and a great mind, you will still hit lots of bad shots. You, you, know, you may feel better about it than most folk, but you'll still hit lots of bad shots. A key chapter in, in the book is understanding the role that attention plays in, in improving your, your golf swing, your, your golf motion. It, it always makes me laugh when people say, oh, that mental stuff is irrelevant, it's all about the golf swing. When you are thinking about the golf swing, you have made the game uh, an element of it, of it being mental. You're placing your attention on what your body does and how you swing the golf club. From some very interesting research, it may well have been the fact that we've been pretty much on the wrong on the wrong lines for a long time in trying to improve our golf swing. If I think back to my my days of playing, so much of, of what I was thinking about, putting my attention on, was turn this and hinge this and get my legs to do certain things, my wrists. I'm, I'm basically focusing on on what I'm trying to get my body to do. Well. The research from a lady called Gabrielle Wolf at the University of Nevada would suggest that we, we may have been on the, on the wrong track in terms of attention. Her research has suggested that if you're trying to improve your, your, your golf swing, your motion, your attention will either be internal or external. Now, if your in attention is internal, you will be thinking about body parts, you'll be telling your body to do various things. If your attention is external, you, you could be thinking about ball flight, you th could be thinking about the shape of the shot, or you could very simply be thinking about what the golf club is doing, what the, what the head of the club is doing, what the shaft is doing, what the grip is doing. And it would seem from her research that, that for a, an awful lot of golfers, a, an, an external focus of attention would be far more productive. You will make greater progress with your golf swing and improve your mechanics, improve the motion that you make by placing your attention externally rather than internally. I talk about this in, in, in great detail in, in the book because for me there's no question that a good golf swing is better than a bad one and a, a good golf swing allied to good thinking will produce the best golfer that you can be. So for now, begin to think about that. If you have been heavily bogged down in the past by thinking so much about what your body's doing in, in the golf swing, maybe become what I call fascinated by the golf club. Become fascinated by what you're trying to do with, with the golf club. And by placing your attention there, I pretty much guarantee that actually your body will start to follow pretty efficiently. It's a part of the book, it's a, it's a whole chapter dedicated to this. Improve your swing by improving your focus of attention. Picture the scenario. You have two groups of people. You have a group of people who are about to, to, to board an aircraft and you have a group of people who are about to get in the car. So you, you have the drivers and the flyers. Now, as a generalization, if you think about those two groups, the drivers and the flyers, which, which group will be more nervous? Well, clearly the, the flyers will be more nervous as a generalization. But when we look at it logically based on statistics, which group should be overwhelmingly more nervous? Well, clearly the drivers, because based on statistics, we're taking far more of a risk every time we get behind the wheel of a car than we are in an aircraft. 
Why is that? Well, it's again one of the key things that I talk about in the in the book it is is the idea that the the flyers feel uneasy and the drivers feel okay because of their attention and what they feel they can control. That the drivers feel in control, the flyers feel out of control. The key thing is that the drivers actually don't have control, but they perceive that they do. So when we focus on things that we have more control over, our mind tends to settle down. How is that relative to your golf or relevant to your golf? Well, when you're playing golf, an awful lot of people are so focused on the score. Now, I'm sure you're, you're going to say straight away, well, that's what I want to do. I want to improve my score to get my handicap. Now, absolutely you do. But if you think about it, can you control your score? Well, if you hit a perfect tee shot and the ball bounces left instead of bouncing right, or you hit the perfect putt on the perfect line at the perfect pace, it doesn't necessarily go in the hole. The ball doesn't necessarily hit the fairway. When ball and club meet each other and there's a separation, there's a great deal of things that you can't control. So the more focused you are on your score, the more focused you are on something that you can't really control. So you become more of a flyer than a driver. So what do you focus on? Well, for me, if there is a secret to golf, it's understanding that every golf shot has three phases. Three phases to every shot. So you've got your pre-shot, your shot, and your post-shot. And two out of those three phases, if you, if you chose to, you could have 100% control over. And unfortunately, it's not the middle bit. It's not the bit when you hit the ball. You have the opportunity at golf to have 100% control over what you put your attention on in the pre-shot and what you put your attention on in the post-shot. I'm not dismissing what happens in the middle bit. I've already talked about the fact that we've got to improve our golf swing. But you will never get the middle bit to be 100% consistent. You would be the first person in the history of the game if you did. My experience, and the reason why I wrote it about it in the book, is that if you get better at the first phase and the third phase, the pre-shot and the post-shot, if you focus your attention on becoming very consistent in those areas, you will give yourself the best possible chance in the middle bit. And above anything else, when you walk off the golf course, if you've executed the first and the third bit all the way around, You'll come off that golf course knowing that you've given the best that you possibly could that day. As I say, it's a key part of the book. It's an element that I think if you put attention on this and you work on this, your game will come on massively in the next few weeks and months. And it's something that you have 100% control over.